Hi, it's Bev from Badass Mother Runners, and uh, we've had a, several questions in the group about nutrition. So we thought we'd bring in our very own expert. Um, so we've got the lovely Laura here to talk to us tonight, and we've got some questions that have been put to Laura by the group, which we will be going through. So Laura, do you want to do yourself a bit of an introduction? Um, yes, hello, uh, I'm Laura, Laura Jones. Um, some of you might already know me from following me on various social media platforms. My Instagram is at Laura LNJ. Um, so I'm a coach, um, I'm an MNU certified nutritionist, which means that I've trained um, with the Mac Nutrition Collective, which is widely regarded as being the leading evidence-based qualification um, for nutrition in the UK. Um, I'm certified insured um and i am yeah really passionate about helping people to have a better understanding of um of nutrition of how it impacts their lives and very passionate about trying to help people break out of the diet industry sort of um cycle so yeah that's what i'm about really oh well we really really appreciate you coming on and answering some questions for us okay. um the group came up with some really really good ones um so what i've done is i condensed those down to five okay so the first question i'm gonna read off my sheet <laughs> the first nice. question um obviously with us all being uh, very keen runners is what foods would you recommend for before, during, and after a long run? Okay, so I'll just say at the outset that I'm going to talk, um, I'm going to answer all the questions in fairly general terms, um, uh, as if they would apply to the majority of people. Now, there will be exceptions in every case. So if we've got people watching who are really training at a high level you know a, a top end performance you know if you've got people get watching that are going for championship marathon places or you know wanting to get fabulous ironman triathlon times then some of this is okay. not going to apply yes exactly <laughs> um so you know, if you're an elite athlete some of this will not apply to you and you know there 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 will be exceptions but I'm going to talk in general terms um, what would apply for most of us that are not training for the Olympics, but are running for enjoyment. Yeah. You know, trying to improve, going for PBs, you know, but, uh, you know, where running is not our job. <laughs> uh, you know, we're not, nice. full -time, we're not full time athletes. OK. Um, so in terms of what you eat before, during and after, I mean, it's really personal. OK. But what I would say is. Um, and I know you're going to ask me about fasted cardio in a bit. So before a run, in in general, in, you know, carbohydrates are what you need. They're your fuel. Okay. Um, okay. Now, you don't need to eat before you exercise. Um, people that get up and like to exercise straight away, you know, in the morning, just go up, have a glass of water and go. It's, it, it, that's absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um if you've eaten carbohydrates the day before, uh, when we eat carbohydrates, our body, what we do is we top up our glycogen stores, which are in our muscles. That's where your body stores the energy that then it's going to convert into fuel to, to keep you going. So if the day before you've eaten carbohydrates, you know, and for your evening meal, perhaps before you go to bed. Now, when you sleep, um, muscle glycogen is spared. Your body doesn't really use it. So if you fill up your glycogen deposits uh, in a day's fueling the day before um, and you know you're going to get up in the morning and you're going to go out for, you know, I don't know, 10K or whatever, first thing in the morning, um, you will be running fasted in, in a sense that you haven't eaten your breakfast, but you're not running on low carbohydrate. You are still you're you're still fueled you're still you know you've got those carbohydrate deposits and in terms of performance um it, you know that would be fine um so if 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 not eating before suits you for anything up to an hour i would say if not eating before suits you don't eat before as long as you're you fueled earlier um anything over than an hour i would say it's best to eat okay. uh, and it depends on what you're going to be doing you know if we're talking about race day um uh, i would say you know we talk about carbohydrate loading so the day before race day um you want to eat high carbohydrates so i would say roughly you want to be looking at 
uh, about if you work out your body weight in kilograms you'd want to eat or drink um, about between eight and ten grams of carbohydrate per kilogram okay. of body weight okay um, over the course of the day before you race that makes sure that your glycogen deposits are full then your muscles are full um, and then on the day of the race or the event you know the triathlon whatever it is um, depending on what time of the day it is between not with, you don't really want to eat within an hour I would say so between say one and three hours before okay you would want to consume um carbohydrates um in a region of two grams per kilogram of body weight um and i would avoid fat and i would avoid anything with too much fiber um to, you know thinking about tummy issues so you know you, you're looking at something like um you know um jam on toast or cereal um bagel something like that bagel. Um, yeah that's it so that's ideal um sort of race morning yeah type you know fuel um during it's a personal thing again so and, and again it depends on the amount of time you're exercising for and the intensity at which you're running you know so for example last weekend i did an ultra marathon um, wow yeah it was not um you know we we took walk breaks we took our time at the pit stops and i ate everything from um a packet of crisps I had a packet of crisps at the halfway point because i really wanted something salty Sounds good. Uh, yeah i had some cubes of cheese um because i just wanted a strong taste yeah. um and then i did have the more traditional stuff like um some sweets i'm not a big fan of gels that I, I don't like them very much and i was just saying mm -hmm. to you before flat coke is one thing that i really like on a run right. um yeah it just sit, seems to sit well with me yeah. um it's, it's it's difficult because and you know i would say to anybody that's watching that you know is thinking about wanting to get their race nutrition nailed down is practice 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 mm. you know we all know that there can be tummy issues um when you're um running i mean you've got for a start you've got the motion which you know bobbing up and down you've got the fact that you're you know when you're working hard your body will divert blood away from your digestive system because it knows you're not using it at the moment it's going right. send, you know, send it to your legs which is where it's needed so it, it, it almost sort of partially shuts that down because it's not needed it can save that blood and put it elsewhere um and then you've got the fact that you know people take a gel and yeah they've got nutrition issues their, their tummy just doesn't deal well with that amount of carbohydrate administered that quickly yeah. um, when it's when it's stressed um, so what i would say is you can you can play around see different brands might work for you different kinds of carbohydrate affect people differently so for example um without wanting to get too technical the 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 way the carbohydrate is transported for example glucose uses a different transportation method than fructose right. um and there um there's a limit to how much glucose your uh, digestive system will take but it might fare better with a fructose with using the fructose to get the carbohydrate in so, and but the only way you can kind of work that out is practice really um uh, you know trying it out before race day um but yeah so that's a bit of and a bit of experimenting really is what works for you and what nothing you like um, and if you on race day yeah nothing new on race day um if like i say if, we, if you're if you're thinking in terms of performance racing so you know if you're chasing that sub four hour marathon or whatever um you need to get it nailed down and i would say you know you need to look at if you can't stomach a gel then you could try something like tailwind yeah. um you know it needs to be something your, your body's preferred um uh place to get fuel from while you're working is um uh, exogenous carbohydrates so carbohydrates that are coming in from external so right. by by consuming something when you are um you know asking big questions of your body that means that you then spare your muscle glycogen um because your body will will choose to use that first okay. um which is why you know you don't wait until you hit the wall in a marathon to take something on board you need you know we would say start at mile five or six something yeah. somewhere like that um and then that's you you then it's muscle glycogen sparing them because your body would rather take would rather use what you're consuming mm. 
but it is it is just unfortunately it is just trial and error there isn't there isn't really a and um you know there are some people that you know we talk about becoming fat adapted which is something if you look at um elite marathon runners they're not taking gels you know the people that win the london marathon they're not you know you don't see kip kuji taking a gel every two miles um and it's because they're so highly trained um and they've become their bodies have become so adapted to it that they can use fat as a fuel at high intensities now for most of us we'll only use fat as a fuel at very low intensity um and as soon as we go above a, a sort of threshold that's when we start to need to use um carbohydrate as a fuel now we talked a little bit about training fasted before um and i explained that just going out without your breakfast doesn't necessarily mean that you're training on low carbs because mm. your muscles are still full from the day before you've still got that glycogen to use um if um you're interested in having that metabolic flexibility um so that your body will burn fuel at a higher intensity what you need to do is um train low so for example you would um uh, you would deplete your glycogen um store stores in a run or a cycle or something you know a turbo session or whatever uh for example on wednesday evening um and then your refuel would be just protein and fat so there'd be no carbohydrates in whatever meal you ate after you'd finished your session so you've depleted it you've used your muscle glycogen you're not taking on any fuel while you've been riding or running you then um recover low sleep low on low and then you get up the next morning and you would do not a session not anything where you're going to expect to hit any but you would do for example an hour of easy running or whatever mm. on low carbohydrate yeah, um yeah. and that uh, basically if you think it just forces the pathways that it you know you've got to use something else mm. um and yeah that's so that basically is is what you know top athletes do they use this carbohydrate periodization to um get this metabolic flexibility that then means that um you know when they're in a situation like kipkuji where their body's under that intense pressure for two hours whereas most of us wouldn't be able to sustain that because we've only got you know probably an hour's worth of yeah. what's in your glycogen stores he's trained his body that he can burn he can also use fat as a fuel at that level yeah. um i've gone a bit off the point now i know it's gone a bit <laughs> got, got he into... does it so quick though doesn't he it's like yeah yeah he's only running for two um, hours <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like 10. <laughs> yeah exactly um yeah so so that's during running um okay. and then after running talking about recovery um always protein always 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 protein um you know it's uh and i think that was the, the one of the things that made me actually reach out to you about wanting to do this was yeah. to, because there's a lot there are a lot of nutritional myths surrounding protein okay. um uh so at the moment the recommended daily um intake for protein is set at 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight right but there is a huge uh, um growing body of um research and evidence and it's really good research you know like gold standard meta-analysis yeah. you know uh to show that it's not enough it's not enough for health let alone for people oh, that okay. are training now um you know every cell in your body needs protein we're not just talking about bodybuilders wanting to get big biceps here you know you need it for every single cell mm -hmm. in your body um and one thing that stuck with me from one of my lectures um, with Martin McDonald was him saying that actually, if you've got a relative, um, particularly they're elderly in hospital recovering from surgery or they had a fall or anything like that, the best thing you can take them is a tub of whey protein because okay. hospital is notoriously low in it and it, they, they need it. And as yeah. people get older, they need more protein. It can really help um, fend off um, age related um Okay. you know issues with um you know muscle atrophy, atrophy and it's it's a really good thing to in, increase their protein as they get older yeah so um always recovery and there's all there's there is no evidence that increasing your protein com consumption will cause any problems in your kidneys for anyone that has got healthy kidneys that has not already got kidney disease um you don't need to worry about it it's not even a concern right. you know um so after your session or your run or whatever um always protein and i would say aim for somewhere in the region of 
0.3 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. So 0.3, 0.4 grams. So for most people, um, a protein shake or, um, you know, overnight oats made with a scoop of whey protein, oh, something yeah. like that would, would, would do it. Yeah. Um, um, carbohydrates, as a, you know, unless you were um, following some sort of carbohydrate periodization, like we talked about before, mm. where I said you wouldn't replace them because you had a set, um, you know, you, where you didn't want them for your next session, then I would include some carbohydrates in, in your next meal after you've exercised. Mm. Um, and fats, you know, everybody, it's, it's a misconception that um, even if you're trying to lose weight, you don't want to cut um all your fat out you you need it you need it for your mood you need yeah. it for um you know for, for, for sex hormones which you know affect your mood so if you if you cut it down low there's a really good saying which is um protein to grow carbohydrate to go and fat for mojo um and if if you cut your fat too low it'll just leave you feeling rubbish you know oh. don't, you know don't do this yeah you, we need it everybody needs it you know and everybody knows that they're um you know if you can include things like oily fish avocados um olive oil th those sorts of fat you know i'm not saying you need to have a mars bar at, as, as soon as you finish running although oh, yeah, yeah. if you want to crack on because <laughs> yeah something else i wouldn't ever do with like straight in the goodie bag it's like a no yeah. bag like <laughs> what's in here um, <laughs> but it really, you know, it really isn't. Um, it, it, the thing about fat is that for every gram of fat, there's nine calories. For okay. protein and carbohydrate, there's only four. So you can see that, you know, you can quickly, um, you know, if you're trying to stick to a certain amount of calories a day, or you're trying to be mindful about your calorie consumption, fat will quite quickly bump you up. Mm -hmm. um, but that, you know, we need it. You, you, you do need it. Um, I'm going to use that for everything now. Laura says I need it. Yeah, you do. You need it. You need, need, need that. I need the extra biscuit. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Um. Okay, that's that's really thorough. That's been amazing. I've learned loads already. Oh, good. Okay, so question two. Yeah. Uh, we had a few questions on this. Um. Obviously, I know we've just spoken about protein, but there was a few people wondering for those following like more of a vegan or a vegetarian diet, what tips would you have for um? Sort of increase in protein intake and are there any sort of like go to quick yeah sort of foods that people can yeah so i mean obviously um if you're vegetarian you can still have whey um and and, and eggs greek yogurt that sort of thing if you're vegan you do have to work harder for it okay. um and the thing to be aware of if you're vegan the thing with animal based um animals based sources of protein is that they're complete which means that they contain all of the um, essential amino acids. So uh, we can't make those. You can't synthesize them. You, you have got to consume them. You need them. Um, and the only way you can get them is by what is your diet. Um, now, animal sources are complete. So you know that if you're eating, um, you know, if, you, if you're eating um, meat and dairy products, um, if they've complete proteins it's not always the case with plant-based proteins okay. so i would say definitely invest in some vegan protein powder and check the amino acid profile if it doesn't appear on the um on the blurb you know when you're looking on the website then email them and ask them for it and ask right. if it's complete okay. um what what you what you find um is that quite a lot of um brands they are now complete because they use a blend so they might use um I don't know, some brown rice protein and some pea. I, I don't know what, you know, they'll, they'll blend, they use a blend of, yeah. of proteins to, to get that complete profile. Okay. Um, so that's the first thing to note, but I, I definitely would say if you're following a, a vegan diet, um, it's worth getting some, um, some vegan protein. And especially if, if you're following a vegan diet and you are wanting to um, lose weight or improve your body composition, mm -hmm. um, one of the first, you know everyone that comes to me that is a vegan that is wanting to uh, you know build muscle and lose some body fat their protein is so low they think they're having enough and they probably are having enough in that it's not negatively affecting their their life hmm. but when it comes to losing weight if you can increase your protein um so not only is protein really good because it we need it and it, you know it's, it's good for recovery yeah. it's good for building muscle and it, it really helps it, you know the aging population but protein is also the most satiating of the three macronutrients. Mm -hmm. So contrary to popular belief, putting away a great big bowl of pasta 
um, and people thinking that's what's going to fill them up the most. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not actually the case. It, it, protein is what will give you the most bang for the buck in terms of okay. filling power per calories. So, um, you know, one of the one of the first things I'll do if someone is is wanting to, um, you know, reduce their body fat is I will ask them to increase their protein. I'm, I'm not a massive fan of, of um, asking people to count calories. Yeah. I do think there is a place for it as a tool to perhaps make people just have a little bit more of an understanding of what portions look like and yeah. how much food, you know. But I, it's I'm all about trying to get people to. Um, make small changes that they can then consistently apply and yeah. make them their normal um so you know instead of giving people a calorie target what i will quite often give them initially is a protein target yeah um and you know meat eaters find it hard to hit sometimes um vegans find it very difficult mm -hmm. um so i would definitely say vegan protein powder another one of my sort of go-to things would be something like um, porridge or overnight oats made with um, like almond milk or yeah. something like that um, so if because oats are high in protein and if you then add the almond milk that gives you a good mm. you know that would be uh, you could be having those for breakfast or for lunch even um, yeah. and you keep you can even add a scoop of um, of whey as well to bump it up um, the thing about protein is that it's better to have it um, you know have full feeding spread throughout the day yeah um, so for example if i said if i said to someone i want you to have a target of 100 grams of protein a day the ideal would be to have to hit 25 grams four times right. um rather than having 50 grams in the, in the morning because you had oats and yogurt and whey protein because actually um you know there's only it gets to a certain yeah. point where um you've you, you're you've You've not. You've used as much. You can, eating more is is not um, going to have the same benefit as it would be if you if you did, if you had that three hours later at lunchtime. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no. So definitely, definitely oats made with almond milk. That's a really good way of getting get a good you know portion in at breakfast. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so then you've got the, the things like tofu, quinoa. I mean, I'm sure people are watching their vegans. They'll they'll know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah and just getting creative with it there are some good um you know books that you know high protein vegan cookbooks that you can get you know you can make um high protein vegan pancakes things like that it's just um it's, it's just getting it making it a priority and um just adjusting in your mind that you probably could benefit from eating more than you think okay. particularly you know if you're trying to if you're trying to lose weight you know anyone that's trying to lose weight wants to lose fat and keep muscle and that's where even if you're in a deficit so you're eating less calories than you're consuming you keep that protein high right. um, and keep up with a little bit of strength training and that is meaning that the weight you're seeing go on the scales is more likely to be fat than muscle you know because you don't want to lose that and the, and the way to do it is to keep protein high and strength train love it Excellent tips, thank you. Um, okay, question three. I know we've sort of briefly covered this earlier, but what are your thoughts on fasted exercise? Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, um, my thoughts on fasted exercise are that, uh, on the whole, it's absolutely fine. And my personal preference, I like to run early in the morning. Um, I and, wish I did. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I don't eat before myself I go. Up. Yeah. <laughs> Like I will um, go. I will torture myself all day. Yeah. No, yes. Uh, yeah. That's it. If I haven't been and I'm thinking to myself, oh, I'm going to have to go now. It's. it's <laughs> I should do um, it. Tomorrow. I should go up early. Go yeah. Early. Yeah. I, I like running. I like running in the morning, and I like being out for sunrise. Um, and it does set me up for the day. But I don't eat before I go if I'm doing anything up to. Probably I wouldn't eat anything up to ten miles, to be honest. Wow. You know, if if it wasn't a session, you know, yeah. I, I I would just go. Um, but my dinner would nearly always have carbohydrate in it, so I would have always yeah. eaten, you know, because I tend to eat. We tend to eat as a family, so and we eat family type meals. So, um, you know, my dinner will normally have been something like cottage pie or yeah, same. Uh, you know, so yeah, I I will have glycogen stored yeah 
Um, but as a general rule of thumb, I would say up to an hour mm-hmm. um, and not trying to um, hit, you know, have the session of your life and hit brilliant paces. Then fasted running is, in, okay. as in eating yeah. without breakfast, is absolutely fine. Um, and I know a lot of people, uh, you know, intermittent fasting is something that's sort of um, become more popular and banded about a little bit lately. Um, and again, I think I think intermittent fasting, if it's a tool that helps you uh, reduce your calorie consumption when you're trying to lose weight, then it's a useful tool. Um, the science behind the benefits of fasting and that sort of thing. That's not why I do it. I mean, I do intermittent fasting every now and then because it just helps me to, if I think that I want to be in a calorie deficit for a bit, it's an easy Mm. way for me. I just think I'm not going to eat until midday and then I'm only, I'm going to stop eating at seven in the evening. Right. Um, Yeah. And there's no reason you can't exercise like that. I would even go so far as to say, um, you know, people, we talk about the carbohydrate intake and people that want to um, train on low carbohydrate so their bodies become more used to burning fat at high intensity. Even you could even have a meal before you did a low carbohydrate session, as long as it was just protein and fat. So, for example, yeah. you could have egg and bacon an hour right. before. You, yeah, if you if you if you were one of these people that thinks, you know, I really would like to try and have that um metabolic flexibility yeah. but i just can't run on an empty tummy you know i've got to have something mm-hmm. then you could still it is still an option for you but you would need to make sure that whatever you were eating before was just protein and fat so think about you know what you can have on the atkins diet you know yeah. bacon and egg um we all get stuck don't we we kind of like oh, gotta go to oh i know i'll eat that before i go to a red yeah red. exactly it's a bit harder to mix it up and-, and and some people just absolutely just cannot uh, tolerate the thought of running at all without fueling yeah. and again that's, i think it's a really personal thing um but no uh, yeah if if fasted suits you then right. i would say i would say do it but don't you know anything over an hour or way yeah. way hard session um you know think about fueling think about um making sure those glycogen stores are full um and you know, and sort of an, a, a couple of hours before you um, you do it, so it's all had time to settle, um, and just keep, you know, if it's going to be a big session, just keep fibre and fat yeah. to a minimum, um, just okay. because you know it is a it, it is a strain on your digestive system, and that's why we get runners' tummy. You know, people do suffer with Nobody it. Wants that. That. No, no, exactly, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, question four. Um, so talking about while people are running, so ideas for high energy snacks. And again, people are looking for that sort of real food alternative if they're not com- quite comfortable using yeah. gels. But I confess I've never taken a gel yet because I think it's one of those things I'm a bit scared to practice. And then on race day, I'm like, oh, no, I better not. <laughs> yeah, don't do it on race day. Um, okay, so again, it would depend on what the event is mm-hmm. um if it's an ultra marathon where you're do- like where you're doing a bit of running a bit of walking um then um flat coke is a really popular option option I have to try that that sounds great yeah it's yeah it's really it's really good <laughs> it's, yeah um um and you know a, you know sweets jelly beans whatever things like that real food but also people really like things like um uh, little cubes of flapjack okay, um, okay. yeah something that's going to give you a bit of um uh, fat as well so that, like I, I think I mentioned that I had some cubes of cheese um and obviously, you know, yeah it is, a, it is a bit of pat lunch snacks and it, it, it that is again just trial and error um yeah. one lady that we that was running with me at the weekend she had little tiny jam sandwiches that that's what she'd um you know so again that bit of sugar yeah um yeah it just depends on on what you can tolerate um if you're talking about actually wanting to um you know not break your stride you know if we're running and uh, you know you're trying to hit a pace then you you sort of you go to the art you you can some people just literally rinse their mouth with um uh like a sports drink yeah um 
because that you know they find it very hard to swallow anything so uh, and you will take a bit on just from doing that it's not a massive amount but it might just be enough to get you through um you know if you find you've got a really dicky tummy and you can't take anything on you can keep swilling you you know taking a swig of that lucasade or whatever it is um and you know just swill it and i shouldn't say shouldn't encourage spitting it out in the times of the global pandemic we're not allowed to spit at the moment um anyway <laughs> no if if we if we weren't um experiencing the global pandemic you could um spit it out next year uh, yeah. <laughs> um and then you know kind of up from that you've got um you know sport drinks yeah so like, uh, you know tailwind is is one that i know a lot of people find works really well for them if they've had um a runner's tummy with with gels and things yeah gels there's a really broad spectrum now because you can get everything from some things that are very very just you know like basically just blitzed up dates um yeah. and you know fruits um through to you know more uh, high tech yeah um ones so there's a whole wealth of ones that you can ex experiment with um again like i say it depends on um what the carrier is for the for the carbohydrates mm. um fructose you can tolerate more of than than glucose so um you know some of them have a, a mix of 50 50 glucose and fructose because it means that people will be able to tolerate more of it mm -hmm. um it's just uh, yeah i'd be fascinated um, i'm gonna be researching all these gels and yeah fructose <laughs> in that one I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna i'm gonna know it all yeah, I'm not a big fan of any of them to be honest. Uh, they just don't. I just don't like them very much. I don't. Yeah. I, I don't like the. I don't like the fact that they're all warm and they've been in my belt. Um, yeah. And I'm then a fan of I think this is the last thing. I, this is the last thing I want to put in my mouth right now. I just don't want it. And, uh, I think, I think the yeah. worst thing I had was when we did. Well, not the worst thing. It was like the best and the worst thing. The worst thing I had was doing Cardiff Half. Somebody was giving out Welsh cakes, which was great. I was like, yes, I'm having one of those. But you have nothing higher than a Welsh cake when you... I know! And that occurred to me after I ate it. I was like, oh. <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a half marathon in Wrexham that's sponsored by the Village Bakery and they give you Welsh cakes at the end. They give you a medal and they give you a pack of Welsh cakes. And I remember getting in my car and going on my Instagram stories after taking a bite of this Welsh cake they and I was like, I've just discovered there is nothing drier than a Welsh cake when you've just run a half marathon. Yeah. I'm going to save it for the end next time. But it yeah. seemed like such a good idea at the time. I was like, oh yeah. Get home, have, have a cup of tea and put some butter on it and then it'll be much better. <laughs> yeah, I'm terrible. I'm like, I'm like what, what else has everyone got? What food you got? I'll have some of that. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Brilliant. Right, last question. Um, what are your top tips for portion control? and probably not overloading on carbs if that's not a good idea or okay so um i'll talk a little bit about so carbohydrates get such a bad rep you know it, i love carbs um, yeah uh, yeah if you if you want to be happy you need to eat carbs <laughs> i love carbs yeah yeah exactly carbs are my friend yeah so um and i know um that you mentioned that you know a few people had asked about macro splits and that sort of thing yeah so i'll just touch on it here okay um it, it's a it's a it's a massive topic as you rightly said so um i'm just gonna sort of say if someone another asks video about, <laughs> yeah another video, then we'll ask about, talk about that next month um <laughs> if someone asked me about macro splits my first um sort of uh response would be why why do you want to know about that you know what yeah. benefit do you think that is going to be uh, it is a myth that there is a perfect macro split for weight loss, a perfect macro split for um, muscle gain. It, it, they just don't exist. It's okay. not. And people, I, I almost think it's kind of got um, to be this way that the industry um, kind of flummoxes people and makes it sound a bit like it's some real special magical. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it, um, I don't give anybody, I give people a protein goal and perhaps at times um, a calorie goal. Okay. Um, and, you know, I would say for most people, if you hit your, if you stay within your calories and you hit your protein goal, then how you split carbohydrates and fat for your remaining calories. For most of us who are, you know, running is our, our hobby and it's our pastime and uh, it really will not as long as we're having some of both carbohydrates and fat um yeah, <laughs> it's fine 
Um, if people want to get a little bit more um, scientific about it, then I would say aim for, um, again, work out your body weight in kilograms. And I would say go for two grams per kilogram of body weight of protein a yeah. day. So you, you can see that's quite a bit higher than 0.8, which is the recommended. Um, but like I say, the research is leading us to think that it should be more in the realms of 1.8 to 2. So okay. go for two grams of protein. Go for, um, I say, if, we're not talking about weight loss here. We're just talking about everyday, you know, maintaining. I would say go for five grams, five or six grams per kilogram of body weight of carbohydrate. Mm -hmm. um, and then whatever calories you've got left, um, and if people want to know how to work out their calories, um, I'm just thinking how long do I talk for here? Um, <laughs> <You're> going, <sorry. laughs> um, whatever calories you've got left you, uh, would then be on fat. And bear in mind that when you're working out how many grams of fat you can have, mm -hmm. there are nine calories per gram of fat and there's okay. four in carbohydrates and protein. Yeah. So if you've got 400 calories worth of fat left, you're not, you know, that's All the carbs. Least, but it, yeah. <laughs> yeah you could you could you could have 100 grams of carbohydrates if you've got 400 calories or 100 grams of protein but uh, you know a lot i can't do that math that quickly but a lot less fat <laughs> yeah, I'm just a nod, yeah. yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so um that would be what i would what i would suggest but really what my advice is is hit your protein target um and if you are if you're wanting to make fat loss um if fat loss is one of your goals, mm -hmm. then um, get your calories uh, calculated. You can ask someone to help you. Um, there's, a, there's an equation called the Harris Benedict formula, which you'd be right. able to see if you, if you Google it, which it, it looks really scary and complicated, but basically you need your, your height in centimeters, your body weight in kilograms and your age in years. And then um, you probably find a calculator online where you can just put those things in a little calculator for you. It's a different formula for a man, a man or woman. That will give you your uh, what we call your BMR, which is your basal metabolic rate. Now, that is the number of calories that you, if tomorrow morning you woke up, opened your eyes and then didn't move all day, that would be the number of calories that your body would use just keeping your heart pumping, your lungs working, yeah. your brain. Um, you know, that is just your baseline. And then what we do is we apply um, a physical activity factor um, uh, onto that so for someone who is very sedentary um you know basically gets up sits down eats breakfast drives to work sits down drives home sits on the sofa um we might only apply um we might only multiply that basal metabolic rate by 1.1 or 1.15 um and then you would go right up to the other end of the scale yeah. when you've got uh, an athlete who you know is training several hours a day who would you know you would be looking at 1.8 1.9 times that yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the rest of us are mere mortals are somewhere in the middle. So you okay. apply that and then that gives you what your maintenance calories are. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, depending on how much weight you've got to lose, um, you then eat in a deficit. So you, would set, I would set you a, if, if you're a client of mine, I would set you a deficit somewhere below that level. So that's how you can work it out. I don't use my fitness pal to, to do it for you. And, and don't use my fitness pal to work out your macros. It, it, it's no good. Okay. Um, ask someone for help. Of that, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, I'm a big fan of my fitness pal for tracking. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, it's fine, but don't let it set your, you need to tell it what your calorie goal is and what your protein goal is. Don't, okay. don't, you know, my, pro, don't use my fitness pal to Be work boss. it out. Yeah, no. Um, and then okay so yeah in terms of portion control and and this is one of the things that i'm quite a big fan of is giving people ways you can i can be fairly sure that someone is in a calorie deficit if they follow um the instructions i've given them and they meet their uh, protein target mm -hmm. uh, and i'll give i'll give other targets like um number of portions of veg a day that sort of thing I can be fairly sure that if they do all of that, they will be in a deficit without yeah. them having to actually count calories. Um, because I know that if they're hitting that protein target, focusing on the protein target, they're eating those vegetables, mm. um, unless they're like mainlining sugar solution, <laughs> they are going to come in, you know, they are going to be in a deficit. Yeah. Um, so things I say are um, if you're, preparing a meal which has got um starchy carbohydrates so by that i mean potatoes pasta all my favorites kind of all the favorites yeah all my favorite 
it, an easy way um if you want to um you know perhaps lose a bit of weight or um you know you just want to be a bit mindful about your you know your calorie consumption for a while is to replace half of your starch carbohydrates with vegetables so for example if you're making a pasta based dish and you would normally put 100 grams of dry pasta per person um put 50 and then make up the difference with peppers onions mushrooms broccoli whatever put your same sauce on put your same chicken or whatever um don't you know so you still have your same portion you're even bigger sometimes you can you know volume veg is brilliant for volume if you if you like a big plate full i do like a big plate full. yeah exactly food. the other thing i say is put your vegetables on your plate first so you know ah, good tip. yeah so many people you know sunday dinner or whatever or meat and two veg your meat goes on first then you roast potato or you mash and then you my have, house <laughs> then you, yeah but, uh, well no because i just know it's it's on me. Them, not just you it's, you know this is this is the long time of me observing <laughs> people and knowing people um uh, and then you've got this little tiny gap on your plate where you shoehorn in a little bit a few little vegetables am i right you know i don't know what you're talking about yeah <laughs> you know a token bit of green on my plate so um <laughs> change that put your veg on first you know the vegetables yes. are king on your sunday dinner plate and then you like a lot of veg meat. i love a yeah. lot of veg on a sunday. loads of veg lo lots of lean meat and um you know if we're talking about like a roast dinner or whatever mm -hmm. and then you know instead of four roast potatoes have two um you know it, it's it's easy things but it's just being mindful being mindful, yeah, that's an easy way. So an easy way is half the starchy carbs at every possible opportunity, replace it with veg. Mm -hmm. Another thing you can do, which is not, um, there is a very famous, um, be careful here, because you know, lawsuits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to get sued. No, no, don't get sued. There is a very well-known um, uh, personal trainer who is very successful, who I know part of his, um sort of plan is that you um don't have carbohydrates on days that you only have carbohydrates on days that you exercise all right okay, um okay. and actually you know i've been saying that for quite a long time it's but not for any other reason other than it's just an easy way to remember and naturally reduce your calories on those days okay um so i'm not saying that if you're not exercising you you don't deserve to eat any carbohydrates you don't need them that's not what i'm saying at all oh, i'm just saying it's I love just carbs. yeah it can just can be an easy way of a couple of days a week um perhaps yeah. going for something like uh stir fry or you know if it's summer you know chicken salad or whatever you know just, it just is an easy way of in your mind thinking oh it's my rest day today so i'm not going to have um potatoes for my dinner today i'm just going to have loads of veg or whatever mm. um but 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 just because it's just little things like that that can just help you yeah. to it's all about balance, um, isn't it? get into pa yeah and get into make things a habit that then they yeah. become, you know it's like meat free monday became something that people are just trying to um you know the thing about meat free and plant based um you know i would say that i am a massive advocate of everyone eating a plant based diet but that doesn't mean plant exclusive you yeah. don't you know for, for for me and for the what the research that we've got a lot of the um uh health benefits that we see from people who consume a plant exclusive diet or switch from um eating animal products to then stopping um it's the benefits that they see actually come from if you go from not eating much vegetable not eating really much vegetables and like i said they're just on the corner if you play it on a sunday to yeah. all of a sudden eating this plant-based diet that is abundant in mm. fruit and vegetables that's why you feel better not yeah. necessarily because you've stopped eating the meat it's because you've added in all the other stuff okay. but, you know if you if you swap chicken nuggets for broccoli um it's Which I you, know, <laughs> you know and you start to feel better yeah. it's not necessarily because there was the chicken nuggets were dreadful for you it's yeah. just because you know actually you probably could still have chicken nuggets just not as much and yeah. have broccoli as well um Definitely do you know what i mean so edge. you can't yeah there's a, a part of the thing about being evidence-based is being very um you know correlation does not equal causation so just you know vegetarians and vegans they tend to be uh, more health seeking individuals mm. so you know for example you know you see and you 
there's been a lot of programs about um and the game changers was the big one wasn't it that we saw lately which was which was about um going to a vegan um diet um and uh, you know i'm always very aware and become more aware since i've done my qualifications that people can make um statistics look show you they, you can always find a statistic to support your yeah. argument if you present it in such a way um and yeah so a, a lot of the benefits that we see from a plant-based diet might just be accredited to the fact that perhaps before their diet wasn't that brilliant and yeah. adding in all these plants has made them feel so much better mm. but it wasn't actually cutting out the meat that's done that it's eaten all this other good stuff yeah so yeah. we just need to keep things like that in in mind really um and yeah so i've gone off the boil now that was that was just about vegetables on the plate first a portion control yeah. um <laughs> yeah that was the other thing um and the other things are like really simple things like um buying smaller individually um packaged things so for example you know chocolate bars buying you know so if you if you open a bar you're going to eat the whole lot okay we'll buy a pack of small bars and you are I just eat them all them. though yeah <laughs> oh my god you see my instagram stories i was like oh it's tiny i need to eat five <laughs> um and the other thing i really like is um uh, I'm giving away all my tips here, but um, one <laughs> one thing that I, I I say a lot to my clients is seven minute rule, which is um, and I'm talking here about um, you know the things that we reach for yeah. mindlessly. So th those biscuits with your cuppa in the evening, which is people's most sort of time when they find this happens and they're reaching yeah. for chocolate or whatever. Um, is I just say, just make yourself wait. Don't just get up and, or don't just put your hand in the biscuits tin while you're waiting for the kettle to boil. If you think to yourself, right, I fancy a Kit Kat. I set, I don't do it as much anymore because I can just do it myself, but I used to physically set a timer. Yeah. Um, seven minutes on the oven or on my phone and then go and do something which is completely unrelated to food, not in the kitchen. So, um, oh god i don't know go and clean the sink in the bathroom upstairs or you know do something yeah. put, put put some nail polish on and then after seven minutes think to yourself um, do i still want it do i really want it if you really still want it have it uh it because, you seven minutes i've already eaten four yeah exactly but that is the thing Sam, it, we, we we do live in that it's so instant gratification and yeah. we have it and it's gone and you think oh i don't know if you just make yourself wait that time i'm gonna um, try this, this is yeah try it, try it uh and a, a lot of the times then you'll think i'm not that bothered now actually you know have a drink because a lot you know and then wait seven minutes and think do okay. i want it and you know like i say if you do think after seven minutes yeah i've considered this and i do still want that <laughs> i've made the decision <laughs> have it for god's sake because you know this is life and it's just not worth yeah. making this miserable over but oh, if half, if even if even half of the time you think, yeah, no, actually, I'm not going to. I, I don't really want it. I was just doing it because I was bored or, you know, yeah. then, you know, if fat loss is your goal, then that's a success. If you, if you manage, you know, half of the time to um, to not do it. So that's another another little tip. Um, tip. I'm going to try that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's my only mission. I'll be texting you tomorrow and be like, I did it. So yeah. Yeah, two instead of six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly it is it's just been it's just been a little bit mindful and um you know you realize it not demonizing anything yeah because the minute you Life's do that short. you and also the minute you do that you just want it more you know yeah. it, it doesn't yeah. work you know it, it one of the things that we say a lot is you know diets don't work and it's it's not true because actually a if, if a point of a diet is to make you um lose body fat then if it puts you into a calorie deficit it will work what we mean is w our diets don't lead to lasting lifestyle change um okay. and and that, you know that is really what you know as a coach and um as someone who's been there um because you know for people that don't follow me probably should have said this at the beginning really shouldn't we um people that don't follow me on instagram and don't know my story is that i personally was um have struggled with my weight my whole adult life um and uh, up into and i have been a yo-yo dieter and stuck in a cycle of um dieting and binge eating really since i was 
mm, well late teens really yeah. um, up until um this time about five years ago i was i'd had three little girls in quite quick succession and i was i was about 20 stone um and yeah so that that was when i and this was yeah 2000 end of 2015 was when i started to um you know changed my life and i've ended up where i am now which god if you told Amazing. me then if you told me that i was gonna run, <laughs> an, run ultra marathon pay pay to run the uh, <laughs> <What? laughs> yeah yeah so um, you know but i i have been there and i know what it's like yeah to be there it's re and particularly if you've been overweight for a long time um and there is just all these people there with their hands out ready to take your money with the latest yeah the latest diet the latest um club to join you know pay to weigh and whatever like that and it's this cycle of you know lose a bit and then you know no one helps you learn about energy balance or um, nutrition you know enough to be able to then sustain that so you know inevitably you regain the weight and then you need to go back and rejoin again which you know kind of when you think about it they're a business that's what they're banking on you doing um if everyone just was a success and lost the weight and never went back again they'd go out of business pretty quick so um yeah it's just you know that i just hope to be able to 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 help a bit and give people you know i do try and give so if you don't follow me on instagram follow me on instagram because i do try and yeah. give what i'll try and do is i'll put links i'm gonna yeah put, i'm gonna put links down below yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> links to, um, to instagram yeah. to your website and everything below the video if i can figure that out yeah right I'm 38 i might have to get my 13 year old to help me <laughs> yeah well i i would be no help whatsoever because <laughs> i you know, this is a, my printer can smell the fear from me just trying to print something and it, it like it knows you know i'm gonna so put all the links it's gonna be all professional okay good <laughs> no laura you have covered i have learned so much in, oh, good. in that chat it's been brilliant and um i know certain all the the ladies in the badass when they run a group are going to be so thankful to have this information um so oh, i just want to say a massive thank you for uh for coming to talk to us and talk to me Hopefully when COVID goes away, we can talk face to face. Yeah, I, I hope so. Yeah, I can get out of my broom cupboard. And, uh... <laughs> I know I'm going to tidy my shelves next time. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so thank you so much for talking to Welcome. me today. Um, and like I say, I will put um, the relevant links in with this video uh, once I master all that out. And uh, hopefully we can chat again soon. Yes, definitely we will. <laughs> thank you so much. All right, take care.